All right, well, here's my very first video ever. I uh, have never done this. Kind of been thinking about doing it, but I don't know. Here it goes. Anyway, um, got some interesting things I, I want to kind of want to show you, um, and I might do a few videos just kind of doing that. Um, anyway, I, I uh, there's some maintenance that I have to get that I that I have to get done on some electronics today, and the one thing that I want to show you um, is sitting there on top of the sub right there. It's right there. Um, that little thing there. Um, kind of has a bit, a bit of an interesting story to it. Um, what it comes down to is my receiver down there, um, this little Sony receiver right here. Um, uh, it's got a, a, <clears throat> a passive output from the subwoofer, um, meaning it's not an amplified signal, so you can't just plug my sub right into it and it works. Um, it requires some type of ampl amplification to go into my subwoofer. and. I don't really like to spend any kind of money, like any kind of real money on things. I tend to like to make things myself or find a way I can do it better, do it cheaper, um, you know, stuff like that. So I had had this had this amp for years, and uh, or I guess I should say the receiver for years, um, and I'd been using it, you know, with all of my all my normal speakers, just kind of running like mids and highs, and not really getting any low end. Um, until one day a buddy of mine gave me that subwoofer right there um and it's also a passive subwoofer it doesn't have any kind of amp amplifications in it um amplifications amplification <laughs> um so i decided okay well i need to figure out a way to 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 get power to the subwoofer um and i realize you're kind of just looking at a static image is kind of boring so I'll, I'll kind of get to the fun part here in a minute um but i realize i need to get to get power to the subwoofer. So what I created um, was this little guy right here. And pardon me, I know I'm doing this kind of shakily on an iPhone, but hey, I, you know, I got what I got, right? So anyway, I created this little guy here and I'll show you here in a minute what it does. Um, I have to do some repairs on it. And it's been kind of kind of working intermittently lately. So, so, lately. so um, anyway, let's jump into it. I'll go ahead and get set up and uh, we'll get started. All right, so here's the amplifier. Um, sorry if it's, sorry if it's a, probably going to be a lot shaky. It's I've been using like an old card table and um, it's kind of janky um, tripod that I got my wife. Anyway, um, here's the amplifier. What it is, I, I used to have a business where I was um, picking up lots of old goods. Um, fixing them up and selling them for a decent profit and I kind of quit doing that it just kind of Took too much of my time. I spent more time fixing things. Than I did actually selling things so um, <laughs> It made it a little bit not really worth it. So anyway um, This is one of the things that I had um, When I put it apart originally all the interior was green with corrosion and just and most of the stuff had been like rusted away, so it just wasn't worth fixing. So um, I jumped to the interior, but I kept the case. I knew I wanted to do something with it. So what I ended up doing here, and I'll show you what I did here. Um, it's an old RCA Victor transistor AM radio. And I'll show you what I ended up doing with this guy. I have one screw holding the entire thing together. Doesn't really need any more than that, but, um, and I'll explain what these guys are here in a minute. So essentially, on the inside, it's kind of a hodgepodge, um, but it works really well. What I have here, um, and I'll show you, there's two main components that make this up. Um, this main piece here, I'll try to get my hand out of the shot. Hi, Robbie, are you having a good time? Are you having a good time, buddy? I bet you are. Okay, so the main component that makes up the amplifier um, is this guy right here. Um, there's a ton of ton of reviews on this guy. Um, I'll try to see if I can remember what it is. Hi, Ravi. You're a handsome boy. You know that you are. Anyway, uh, it's this guy right here. What it is, it's a Class D 100 watt amplifier, um, specifically built Ravi. Hi. Hi. Are you having a good time? <laughs> So apparently this is going to be fixing things with Robbie, my son. Hi, Robbie. 
So it's a class D amplifier, um, <laughs> I said. Um, and my son was just having way too much fun. Are you having a good time, buddy? Yeah? Okay, cool. So, class D amplifier, 100 watts, and it's built for stuff. It's supposed to have a... Uh... Let me pause, hold on. All right, apparently it's take two now. Um, sorry about that. Anyway, back to what this is. Um, what this is, it's a 100 watt class D mono subwoofer amplifier. Um, and it's actually built off the TPA3116 um, chip, which is under here. Um, I'd done a lot of research and knew I needed, I wanted something that was at least 100 watts um, that would drive my sub. So I picked up one of these guys, I think off of like Alex, AliExpress for like seven bucks. Like they're, they're stupid cheap. Um, I also knew I wanted to be able to control the frequencies that were driven to my sub. I didn't want just whatever um, crossover was in this guy to be the limiting factor. Um, I wanted to be able to choose. Hi, Ravi, I see you. You need to go, go peekaboo? You need to go peekaboo? Uh oh, where'd Ravi go? Peekaboo, there you are. Anyway, I wanted to be able to choose um, whatever frequencies I had. So um, the second component in here, let me see if I can get a little bit of light on that. I'm gonna try to do this without blowing up the camera here. Um, was the second component is right here. Um, what this guy is, and you'll see there's knobs right on the front there. What this guy is, this is, um, <clears throat> It's an active. <laughs> I just never be able to get this video done, am I? My son's just too darn adorable. Anyway, it's an active crossover, okay? So, uh, and it'll do mono or stereo depending on how you wire it, right? So, it's a crossover. Um, so, anyway, the problem we're having today, okay, so I've got the amplifier, I've got the crossover. The problem we're having today is that it kind of cuts out, it's kind of intermittent. Um, and so we're gonna try to fix that. So let me go ahead and grab my iFixit kit here. Um, and most of these are pretty much flathead. So really all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of take the wiring that I have in here um, and really just kind of see, you know, maybe like if I need to strip it back, I'll strip it back a little bit. Or if I really just need to kind of tighten things down, I will. Um, I probably need to do a better job at making this a permanent setup, but for now, it kind of is what it is. It's been running a couple of years like this, so it's been fine. I haven't really had too many issues, so um, we're going to go ahead and we're just going to see if we can kind of tighten things up and do a little bit of cleanup. So let's start like this. Let's go ahead and let's pull the volume pot off. Actually, that, that should come right out. There we go. And let's disconnect that guy. And the first thing we're gonna make sure is just that the connections on here are good. Um, the solder joints kind of look like crap just because at one point I decided I wanted to kind of pull components off of it and kind of build my own. And that really didn't work. Um, in fact, the heat needed to pull some of the stuff off. It was kind of melting things. So I decided just to leave it alone and kind of re-solder things back to things as they were. And I started, some of the traces were damaged from the factory, so I had to fix them with like one right here um and it kind of had kind of had to resolder it back all the way over here the pad had lifted it wasn't great so um anyway i'm gonna go ahead and let's go ahead and just make sure these are decently in place so i'm gonna loosen this yeah that one's not perfect let's loosen that quite a bit goodness gracious Hi, Roddy. There we go. Okay. I probably could put some bigger wire on that. And I'll probably end up doing that at a later time. But let's go ahead. Um, let's see. I'm going to kind of scooch this out of the way real quick. And I'm going to go see if I can grab my rod. I also have my prior, proper wire cutters, but I don't know, they're <laughs> in my toolbox and that's too far away for me to grab it, so I'm just going to use my Leatherman. 
I'll strip a little bit of that back. Expose a bit more wire. And kind of what I like to do when I'm doing this, um, you know, I don't just, I just don't like the way that this light works. And anyway, kind of what I like to do when I'm doing this, let's see if I can get that into the light, is I kind of like to just, because I'm using a thinner wire here, um, I really should be using a thicker one, and I probably will change that out in the future, but I kind of like to just expose a little bit, as much as I can. And then we're just going to kind of get that bought up like that, shove it right back in there. These little terminals are great. You can you can shove it in and then tighten it down real tight, and that'll hold on to the wire real nice. So we'll go ahead and tighten that up. So that's in there. That's that's you know every dad says it's not going anywhere, right? Let's right, that. There we go. Okay. Same with the other one. We'll loosen that up. My hand's probably in the shot. I'm sure. My son wants to play his little fishy game, which teaches him numbers and colors and letters and things. All right, so we get that back in there. Tighten that up. All right. Second thing I'm just gonna double check. Um, and this one, this one I, I'll show you here. I, I had to make this. Um, I really kind of had to figure all this out and kind of finagle everything here, but this volume pot, I had to do something kind of special with it. Um, yes, that is a quarter. Um, you know, hey, don't tell the American government, we'll be, we'll be just fine, right? <laughs> Kidding. Um, anyway, this is a quarter. The reason why I have a quarter here is really just because it's taking the place as a washer, right? It's got a hole in it. Um, I'm just going to make sure that with everything loosened off, there's no issues with the switch. Switch seems fine. Um, but the reason why I have the quarter here is because I wanted to make use of the of the original, um, you know, we'll call it a volume hole, but there was one. Here we go. Right. It was right here. On the front or on the side, I guess. I, say. I think it was actually an antenna, because um, there was an antenna here and a little keeper here. I want to make use of this hole as a volume. Um, it's a rather large hole, so, um, and this is not a huge um, diameter. So I wanted to, to make use of so, and, and I really didn't want to go to the store. And I don't really have a lot of washers here, so I just put a hole in a quarter and it's fine. So there's that. Like I said, I, I kind of created all of this kind of custom and yeah, it's a little jank, but you know, hey, it works and um, nobody complains. So, um, you know, in fact, um, it works so good that our neighbor complained um, to, and it's weird because like we have a good, a good relationship with them, but they complained to our property venture company. So that is whatever it is. So who knows? Anyway. Um, so that's fine. I'm gonna go ahead and I'll hook this guy back up. And now let's go ahead and take this piece out and see if we can tighten these connections. Cause I have a feeling it's gonna be one of the connections to here that may rattle loose. Um, this guy sits on top of the subwoofer. Um, it, I'm probably gonna put it back to where it's not sitting tight to the subwoofer cause I think it's just rattling some connections loose. Um, so I'll show you how we do that. So we're gonna take these pots off or the pop covers, I guess I should say. And I kind of had to drill this out and kind of get it to sit in there just right. This front one here is the original volume. Um, this one here I had to drill out. So we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna loosen these up and take them out of there. Let me see if I can. I don't know if that's in frame or not. I'll go back and watch this and see if it is. If it isn't, then well, I don't know. My first video is going to be a bunk. That's just the way it is. That's the way the cookie crumbles. And that's the way it was. That's the way I like it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. All right. 
So here is the crossover. The way I have this wired, um, this guy here, I believe, should be the incoming power. It is, okay, so the connection, if I can get these stinking things apart a little bit. All right, so this connection here, um, is the incoming power. So I have it coming in from here, coming to here, then I have, you know, I, just, I have it tapped going over to the amplifier as well. Um, both of these, both this and this, can take a wide range, you know, we're from like 12 to 24 volts, right? So I'm running like an 18 volt laptop adapter on it, and it runs great. Um, so no issues there, it's 18 volt, like something like four amps or something like that. Um, it's pretty high amperage. I think it's almost close to five amps. These guys work with it just fine, excuse me. Um, this here is, is your, your incoming uh, audio connection. It's a mono connection because this is built for a, it's weird. It's got a mono connection, but then it's got stereo outputs. And I'll show you how I wired it to be truly a mono connection. But, um, so mono connection input and then stereo outputs, which really, I think, I think, it, I think they were, they were meaning it for it to be like a dual mono connection, but who knows? Um, so now this is your output. And really all I did was, um, so you've got your positive here, your negative, and then you've got another positive, right? So all I did was, was I just wired the two positives together. And then of course the negatives are the same. So I just wired the two positives together. So we're gonna go ahead and make sure that these are good and tight. I'm gonna start with this side here. Loosen it up. Make sure there's nothing stopping that. Nope. That looks to be fine, so we'll go ahead and tighten that back up again. And I can actually turn that a little bit tighter than I had it, so I think that one had gotten loose. And that's probably going to be our culprit there. Um, we'll go ahead and do our negative. There. That looks fine, actually. That one's actually been soldered. Um, or I guess I should say it's been tinned. So it's, it's good and it's solid connection so that's not, not going to be our issue i think that's just because they were loose so this should fix this and then lastly we'll just do this one. oh yeah this one will still be loose so we'll get these two kind of shoved back in there yeah this one was our problem right here the main connection now i realize i'm using under gauge wires um, and I'm probably going to be upgrading all of this here pretty so pretty short in the future. Um, for what it does to our sobo, for what it does for us though, it's it's fine. Um, the sobo for hits really hard, like I said, so loud that the neighbors complained. Um, so that's a that's a good thing. <laughs> I mean, it's a bad thing they complain, but it's a good thing that it hits so loud that the neighbors complained <laughs> that they, you know, felt wow, it's loud in their house too or their side of the duplex. Um, so we'll, 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 we'll go ahead and put this back together. Um, but before I do that, let me go ahead and explain. Um, let me make sure my phone's still copacetic. It is, okay. Um, let me go ahead and explain what this guy is. So you guys might have seen, when I first took this apart, you'll see there's the, this bank of RCA connections. You see I have them labeled one, two, and three. What this is, um, I wanted a way to make all my connections, and I didn't want to have just a bunch of wires sticking out and like they have them permanent. I wanted to be able to unplug it, walk away, and not have a bunch of wires and stuff, right? Um, and I needed some type of way to, to have a connector. Um, and at the time when I was making this, um, I, had, I had all the components, I put it all in there, and it was like 10 30 at night. And I really just wanted to get it done. <laughs> I didn't feel like ordering anything, I didn't feel like waiting for it. So, what I did was, um, and this is still when I was running that business. Um, I had this the, this old like DVD surround sound that was just trashed, and, like it, somebody had, had like physically drove it over, right? So I was I, I had grabbed it just because I was just going to harvest the components out of it, right? So what I so what I did was um, it had one of these connectors. I think it's like a five one audio or or no, this is a um, this is for component video probably out. Um, and and standard and video out. So you've got your your you know your yellow for your video, your two audios, and then these are your component connectors, right? Um, 
So what I did was I actually just desoldered this, and you'll see it's got these little waves here. I just desoldered it from the board from that old DVD player. I just desoldered them, um, and then I just went in with my my my, my continuity tester. Um, just make sure everything was still good, um, and then I just began to wire things up. Um, you know, so I connected. What's this guy? This guy's the power. Uh, this one's running over to three, um, and then uh, yeah. So I just wired it up. You know, so I've got my my power input. Um, this one here is my audio output. This is going to the top one here. This is one, and then two, obviously, is going to be uh, my audio input, my audio input, pardon me. So, um, at first I had an issue when I, when I hooked it all together, I realized I was getting a really, really bad hum. And I realized on the front of this guy, the whole faceplate, um, everything shares the same common ground connector. Um, and and, I, and I, I, here, let me see if I can just pull it off real quick. I'll, I'll crack that up a little bit and I'll show you. But I had this really bad ground. Um, and it took me a second to realize, not a bad ground, but really bad hum. It took me a second what, to realize what was going on. And when I realized I was getting active voltage through it, I realized, oh, what well, the problem is, is this thing is all sharing the same ground. So you'll see here, all the, these plates are all connected together, right? These ones were as well, and I re had realized um, they were, so the power input, the, the negative from the power was also hitting these guys. So I didn't want that to happen. So what I did was I actually lifted this entire thing up and I just cut it in half. That way this ground connection was not touching this one or these ones at all. So cut that apart. I know it's kind of not super interesting, but um, you know, like, if you're, you know, if you're building things, you kind of have to diagnose these things. You kind of have to figure out what you're doing along the way. And, and so it's important to know, you know, you know, you don't want your, your power ground to be sharing the same ground as your audio ground. Um, I mean, there are some circuits you can get away with that, but on this particular one, it was a bad idea. So I cut that, and now it's 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 its own clean, separate ground, and it's fine. Um, so we'll go ahead, let's go ahead and put it back together. Um, I'll I'll go ahead and pause. You I mean, you already saw me take it apart. Uh, you don't need you don't need to see, see me put it back together. But I'll go ahead and pause, um, and then I'll show you me plugging it all back in, and then we'll give it a test see if it's working. All right, so there's the unit put back together. My son apparently doesn't want me to make this video. Um, I wanted to kind of just quickly go over. Hi, Hanson. That's a V. Yes. <laughs> I wanted to kind of quickly go over um, just kind of everything about this real quick. Uh, just kind of kind of show you how it works, um, and then I'll plug it in and I'll show you how it sounds. So <clears throat> this original dial here, I actually had to glue it back on because it used to have a little post that kept it in place. You could spin it. Um, it's glued back on, and that is its final resting place. It's going to sit right there between 7 and 8, and that's just where it's at. Um, the front end here, this is going to be, um, this is the crossover. And it's kind of kind of has like a, like a built-in amp. It's really really more of a preamp um, than anything. It's a it's a preamp crossover combo. Um, so anyway, this this one here, this is where you can set your frequency. Um, this is where you set your gain. I run it all the way, right? Because it's preamp, right? You want it you want it pretty well loud. Um, so I run the gain all the way, and then I kind of set this just a little below. Um, halfway, um, and that sits right around 60 to 80 hertz or so, um, and that seems to do a good job. You know, we know, we're not getting all those muddy sounds. If I crank it up, it gets real muddy and gross, and it's just, it doesn't sound nice. So I bring it down to about 60 to 80 hertz, and it sounds good. Um, so like I said, this is the main volume pot. Um, it's a latching pot, so it clicks, clicks back off, right? Um, and for this duplex, it, anywhere higher than that, and and we're hurting our ears because it's too loud, um, which is good. So you know, for a hundred watt amp, this it's I mean it 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 definitely bumps in here. So uh, so we we tend to run it about there. When it's not working right, we kind of have to turn it up. But 
right about there should be a pretty normal spot. So anyway, um, we'll go ahead and get this plugged back in. Um, like I said, here's all the connections. It's back together. It's solid. It's not doing anything. Um, so we'll go ahead and get this all plugged back in, and uh, we'll give it a test. Make sure it's working good. All right. So there it is, all plugged back in. Let's see if it works. I just grabbed a bass test video from YouTube, and we'll see how it sounds. Yep, it's definitely working, so I'd say that's a success. Alrighty. Well, hope you guys enjoyed it. I, uh, you know, I tend to do a lot of stuff like this. I tend to make my own stuff, and it usually works pretty good, so. Um, I may have more videos in the future. I may not, but here's to hoping you like this one. All right, have a good day.